study conducted by NYU may have found some answers. Dr. Sam Parnia is the Director of Critical Care and Resuscitation Research at NYU Langone School of Medicine, where he ran this study. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Parnia. Pleasure. Thank you so for having me. What would you say, what actually happens when you're clinically dead? Well, you know, when people die, essentially it's when the heart stops. So this has been going on for, as far as we know, millennia, not longer. And when the heart stops, you stop breathing and your brain shuts down, and that's how we declare people dead. And that's why we gave a time of death and we give them a note. And really, to be honest with you, until about 50 years ago, that was the point of death. So people become lifeless, motionless, the brain shuts down. But now through advances in medicine, we can actually bring people back to life, even after they've gone beyond that threshold of death, um, and study what happens to them. And one of the interesting things, of course, is that the brain completely shuts down, as I said. But what's fascinating is that the cells inside the body, and particularly the cells inside the brain, mm -hmm do not suddenly become annihilated. They go through a process of decay that can take a few hours, which is why we can actually medically bring people back to life after they have technically gone beyond that threshold of death for tens of minutes, if not hours of time afterwards. And that, of course, raises many interesting questions about what happens when we die. So tell me more about this study. How did you conduct it? And tell me about you know, how you came about reaching your findings, your conclusion. You no, know, I'm, I'm an intensive care doctor, so my job is to essentially save people's lives and prevent them from dying. But unfortunately, people do die, and we try to revive them. What we have found is that over the last few decades, many millions of people have now come back, and many of them have reported, actually, anecdotally, that they've been able to see and hear things going on, even though, from our perspective, they should have been dead, and their brain should not be functioning at all. And so we became intrigued to study this, one, because it was fascinating, and two, because we try to revive people without brain damage and to ensure they don't have any disorders of consciousness, so not becoming like brain damaged or having a vegetative state. At any rate, so this particular study is the largest study ever carried out in the world. It was done in 15 medical centers across the U.S. and in Europe, and we studied more than 2,000 people who'd gone through this cardiac arrest or process of death. And we did not expect people to have any consciousness or, or awareness, mm -hmm. but intriguingly, up to 40% of people came back and had had a perception of being aware of what was happening to them, even though they had technically gone beyond the threshold of death. Why do you think that is? Well, there's a lot to it. Um, I should also add that among that group, 10% had a very deep, profound, mystical experience that was very true to them. But interestingly, 2% actually had full awareness, could describe all the events that were going on that were validated. So of course, the question is, why does that happen? And we don't have the answers, because to our scientific model, when people have died, there should be no more conscious awareness going on. Uh, but it sounds like maybe consciousness is able to continue. And by that, I don't mean that they're awake. But that entity that makes us who we are, makes Sam who he is, makes Rena who she is, the self, the mind, seems to continue and doesn't become annihilated after a person has gone through their process of death. In the beginning, God said, let us create man in our image. In our imagination, God is creative thought, a supreme intelligence who thought of who thought to create the physical image that it could occupy, that God can live in and occupy. You are a lost, completely lost soul. You're running around here with a heart full of hate, praying to a God in the sky that don't exist. You think just because you do a few nice things for somebody, and the nice things that you do for the person, you're only doing it for recognition and because to say or feel like when you when you die you gonna go to heaven to a heaven that don't exist on the outside and, and to live 
in it with a God who doesn't exist. You're lost. There's no God outside of yourself. There's no heaven outside of this atmosphere, this planet. I'm going to put it to you like this. When you're awake, you think. When you go to sleep, you dream. In other words, you think. What you think will happen when you die? Physically die. You're going to continue. Your mind continues to exist. You continue to exist because you are your mind. In other words, what you call your heart. That's you, your mind. That same mind and that heart that's full of hatred and deceit. You talk about people and you constantly think of ways to treat people bad. So what you think will happen when you close your eyes and they lower you in that dark ass ground? You know what they said in scripture? There will be darkness well in the gnashing of teeth. If you turn most of you inside out, that's what it is. Darkness. You miserable motherfuckers. Keep looking for a heaven outside of this atmosphere, outside of yourself. When all there is is the hell that's what's inside of yourself. The way you live and exist in, a, in your body is the way you're going to live and exist in that grave.